politics of the governorship race in Edo State. Today we're being joined by the senior guest with us, Mr. Olumide Akpata, a formidable figure in the Nigerian law and the former president of the Nigerian Bar Association. Mr. Akpata is now setting his eyes on a new challenge, aspiring to become the governor of Edo State under the Labour Party, known for his legal argument and commitment to justice. Akpata brings a unique perspective to the realm of politics from someone who became uh, the president of the nigerian bar association from the outer bar is uh, been breaking boundaries but how will he be able to do this he's going to be joining us to talk about his ambition to want him to become the governor of federal state thanks so much mr akota for joining us tonight thank you Shu. thank you for having me <laughs> it's so interesting i mean when i heard it first and i was seeing some signals as to uh ulumide akpata and i saw uh, your, you, you probably would teach me that dance. I don't know <laughs> at what event you, you did that dance. Free, so, free I, dance lessons for next week. <laughs> I was surprised uh, uh, that you wanted to become governor. I never saw it coming. Mm, well, um, maybe, maybe, I, I, maybe I never gave the indication before now. But so we have talked many times and we have, we have both of us agonized over our country mm -hmm. and uh, the, the trajectory of our country at the moment, you and I. And um, comes a time in one's life when you have to take a stand and say, listen, I, don't want, I want to be part of the solution. Uh, I, I, I actually put out a statement when I picked up my party card and I, I said to the nation that uh, I was tired of being, being a complainant or complaining you know, I, I thought that I should take a step. And it is in our enlightened self-interest to do that. You know, take a step and come out and um, try very hard to see if I can be part of the solution. And um, when I surveyed the field, uh, I found a party that I thought gave an expression to my own objectives, uh, or that tallied with my own objectives. And then... Um, I thought, why not go home and start at home, Edo State? Um, we have an off-cycle election coming up in uh, September of uh, this year. And so that time I said, why don't we go home and demonstrate, as I keep on saying, that governance is not rocket science. And just a few things that we've gotten wrong, a few basic concepts that we've gotten wrong. So this is my own, this is me stepping out of my comfort zone to ensure that that comfort zone remains. Because if you stay in your comfort zone and uh, hope that just by staying there you protect that zone, you've got it all wrong. Mm. Uh, for someone who has been a successful commercial uh, 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 law practitioner and you're coming and a lot of people will think, doesn't this guy want to continue to count his money and just uh, comfortably do that? And uh, that those who will say, okay, uh, what are you bringing to the table? Why do you want to be, uh, be governor of Edo State? What did you achieve as the president of the NBA? What would you be telling those who are asking that question tonight? Don't I want to count my money? Um, you can continue to count your money, right? But if there's no country left for you to live in, where will you spend your money? Like I said, it is in our enlightened self-interest to take more than a passing interest in how we are governed, and to ensure that we are, we are counted amongst those who make policy. Because if you leave it to others who, who probably may not have your interest at heart, or may not really be there, your interest may not be aligned, you will be uh, the one who suffers under those policies that are made by people who don't think the way you think. So you might as well come out. So what am I bringing to the table? I'm, I'm, First and foremost, my problem with politics in Nigeria and governance in Nigeria, like I've said many times, is that the people have been taken out of the equation. So for me, what do I bring to the table is to just to insert the people back into the equation as they rightly, where they rightly belong. But what would you say you have done to ensure, I mean, once you have been given the opportunity to serve your own profession, what would you say uh, would be the trust quota that Nigerians can take, derive, take out of the role you have served before Sheo, that is in the public. Sheo, I was president of the bar from 2020 to 2022. 30th president of the Nigerian Bar Association. When I was running for office, you do a poll. Seven out of ten Nigerian lawyers will tell you, what does the MBA do for me? If there's anything I did, I ensured that there was buy-in. The lawyers believed again in the association. We gave the association its voice. And we're also prudent. 
I'm so I left behind after spending money on programs. We ran all our programs. We did everything that we needed to do. We made the lawyers proud again to be lawyers. We still left a 1.5 billion naira in the accounts of the NBA. So if you come, become governor, you become a prudent governor. I will be a prudent manager of resources, men and resources. It's not that difficult. Now those will be asking, do you have uh, the competencies, the, the, the experience to, to run? Uh, you've run a, 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 a law chamber, but the experience of running a state as governor, they're two, two different things. I beg to differ. To run organizations, the principles, are the same, you know, the principles, prioritizing, when you budget, what do you spend your money on? Is it stuff that, the stuff that impacts on the people? Then the most important thing, transparency. You run government, not, not like a, a coven. You run government because it's the government that belongs to the people. You let them know what you are doing and let them understand why you are doing it because they matter. Democracy is about the people. I beg to differ. It is not that difficult. We are the ones who make governance appear like rocket science, appear like some kind of a sorcery. It is not. So we are here to show that I am here to show that all you need is you have a track record of managing men and resources. Nigerian Bar Association, by no means am I comparing, am I attempting to compare the MBA to the to Edo State, but you asked the question. Run an association, 128 branches nationwide. 100,000 lawyers. It is the same principles. What do you want to achieve? Well, how can you get the best results for the majority of the people? Really, Sheung, if the people are at the heart of all that you do, you will achieve success. Mm. Well, uh, uh, Mr. Akpata, you are saying and perceived, and indeed you are an outsider in the mainstream politics. Uh, your choice of Labour Party, what informed it? Because that those who asked the question, he had his own internal wranglings. And that, again, could be a bedeviling factor for your chance. No doubt about that, but any, any human organization has its own, uh, would always have their own problems and their own issues. But why did I go to Labour? Like I said, I'm about the people. Just take, take your... Take your Take the starting point from the logo of the Labour Party. Papa, Mama, Pekin. People-centric, people-focused. That resonated with me. And that is why I went there, because this party is about the people. This party once has put the people at the center stage. And so I have no regrets whatsoever going to the Labour Party. Internal wranglings, yes, definitely that's a problem, that's an issue. Um, but I want to believe that the mechanisms that exist in the party uh, are strong enough, are robust enough to help us deal with those internal issues because uh, perception is reality. If the people walk away with the perception that labor is no different from the others and we're embroiled in needless controversy, that of course would affect candidates or aspirants like myself. I agree with you. So I am, uh, I am hopeful that uh, the party of uh, Peter Obi, uh, the party that is known to be different and doing things differently, We'll ensure that uh, whatever issues that we have, bedeviling the party, as you say, will be resolved. I'm, I'm just, uh, you know, fingers crossed and mm -hmm. hoping, that, hoping for the best. Uh, uh, do you have uh, the consent or the endorsement of uh, Mr. Akpapa or Julius Abure? Which of them are you working with? Well, I'm, I'm working with the party. There's what they call status quo. And the status quo that I am aware of at the moment, pending when the final, the, the apex court of the land decides on... Uh, on the matters before it. The, the status quo is that Julius Abure is the, uh, is the acting chairman of uh, the Labour Party. So all of us aspirants in, uh, in Edo State, and there's quite a number of us, we have all mm -hmm. approached the party at the state level. We have a, a, a sitting chair at the state level, uh, and, he, he, and it is to that structure that we have uh, expressed our interest. To, uh, to run for office. You'll be up against the likes of uh, Reisman. Uh, uh, you know him. And there are those who will say, I mean, these are core politicians. They've been politicians. Are you worried about the kind of contest you are up against? Not in the least, you. Uh, if, 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 if core politicians is a badge, it's a badge I don't want to wear. Not in the least at all, because um, there's really nothing to be worried about. These are... 
uh, many names, uh, apart from Mr. Reisman, the 25 other plus aspirants in the race. Um, the issue really is what do you, what do you bring to the table? Uh, what are you offering that's different? Some are serial contestants. They've been running for office for like as long as I can remember. Uh, uh, what do you bring to the table? What, what, what are you, what, are you, are you, when you say core politician, it almost sounds like a, a, a nasty word or a nasty phrase. Well, because it's th those who know the game. Yeah. What, uh, game, like, what, what game show? Uh, the game what of game? politics, because game politics, politics is a game, yeah. That has uh, brought our country almost to his knees. Mm. If those who are playing it all their lives, in the US, in the UK, there are those, the only thing that they've done all their lives mm. is politics. They've been in the Senate, they've been president, and you can mention them, say Joe Biden, uh, mm. the Barack Obamas of this world. These are people who have been in politics for years upon years, and the question is that they understand the game. If There's you're going through a collegiate yeah. process of election, for example, the delegate uh, will be there, and you need their buying in that those who have been with this delegate for, for several years, and you are an outsider, you are just a newcomer, a newbie in the game. Isn't that some kind of a hurdle for you? Well, there's, nobody ever said it would be easy, so life comes with hurdles. But I tell you what, the people are discerning. So when you call, there's nobody in the field, you know, that is of such a, that has such stellar, stellar uh, uh, credentials that you say, oh gosh, this person has done so well, Let's, uh, give, let him bow and go, as they say in this part. The people are discerning. They are tired of the old. They are tired of the same old, same old, which has achieved no results. So I have shown up. And uh, if you do, you have, you have your ears to the ground, mm -hmm. Sheung. You do your vox pop. I have shown up in the Labour Party. And I have told them to dare to dream, dare to believe that there's a different way, a better way that this can be done. And, and, that, and that has resonated. There's buy-in from across the party. I have gone around the state twice, 18 local governments twice. I have reached out to the people. It's imp they are what is important. Some contestants, you know, this is a third or fourth, uh, some aspirants, this is their third or fourth uh, incarnation as far as being aspirants is concerned. They've left one party to the other. Oh, some of them, the people have said, no way. No way. We, you've come before. We've not, we, 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 we don't vote for you. And you come back. All the stuff you give us, you come and you say, give me my stuff back because you didn't vote for me. There are people like that in, in the field. Mm -hmm. But I'd like to ask you, uh, I mean, I'm worried of how you're going to beat some of these guys who have been in the game to their game. Um, and the, the, the question also will be, when did you join the Labour Party? I joined the Labour Party last year in March. Okay. Right. And uh, how do you beat these people at their game? So is it their game? It's been in the game. It is not their game, show. So You've you been see, in law practice for years. Oh, yeah, for 30 years, And if, 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 uh, years. if someone who has come to the bar last year yes. come and wants to beat you to the game, you'll be in this game. Oh, no, the so person will have to the, also cut his uh, teeth. The wisdom of Solomon has nothing to do with the age of Methuselah. I'm sure you know that. So it is not about how long you've been So you are ready to take them on. Ready, psyched, mm. gingered. Mm. But do you have the statutorily, as part the constitution of the party, mm. to be able to run on the platform of the party being a newcomer, oh, yes. a new member? I've checked the books. I'm good. Uh, I know you're a lawyer. Yes, I'm good. You so you've got a waiver? No, I don't have a waiver. I'm within a time frame. No, go and look at our constitution. We're good. Mm. So did you get the endorsement of Mr. Peter Obi? The endorsement of Mr. Peter Obi. I didn't know Mr. Peter Obi was in the business of endorsing uh, aspirants. Okay. Mr. Peter Obi, I would expect, would wait for the outcome of the primaries and then uh, campaign alongside whoever the candidate of the party is. In, in politics, you, I mean, so because you are a newcomer in politics. Yeah, so, right. Uh, so yeah, let, yeah, let, right. Let's teach you some of the. <laughs> so endorsements are very important. Mm. And for a Peter Obi, who, who has been christened is the, uh, the, the Peter Obi is synonymous to Labour Party. Labour Party is synonymous to Labour Party. And there is a movement that has attached a link to the Labour Party, which is the obedient movement. And, and that those who believe that uh, uh, they are ardent and are very strong supporters of Peter Obi, mm. getting a, a, an endorsement or a buying of a Peter Obi will go a long way to help your cause. That's what I mean. I know what you mean, Sheung, but put yourself in the shoes of Mr. Peter Obi. 28 plus aspirants on the field. Do you really think he would endorse one? 
above the others. Are no. you speaking to me? Have you spoken to him? No, no, no. I, Mr. Peter Obi is a friend of mine, right? So, of course, he knows about my ambition. We've talked about it, but I expect no less from him. He's a, he's, he's a Democrat. He's, uh, he's, uh, he's fair. He's just. He's equitable. So what he will do, he will wait for the process to play out. He may have his personal preferences. Do you believe in the process? Uh, the process, you know, I have my doubts, right? Or let's, let me call them my concerns. Having just watched keenly uh, the process in Bayelsa State, in Imo, and in Kogi, um, there are definitely, there were glitches there. And um, I'm hoping that 2020 be in hindsight. I'm hoping that uh, those who superintend our affairs would go back to the drawing board and ensure that uh, we don't have the kind of... Uh, recriminations that we had, in, for, particularly by us, you know Deng's already, Deng's is a good friend of mine, and uh, he has regaled me with uh, tales of war. In Amboy, your in, party in, had a problem? In, in Bayelsa. In Bayelsa, the, the party had a problem? Yeah, so, in several states, your, your yeah, party, yeah, so there are those who are agitated. It's cause for concern. It is cause for concern. If you are played out and you don't get a ticket, what would you do? Well, I don't know. I don't think in those terms. When you say played out. It could be played. It's a game. I don't think... I don't and in think that game, it's either you win or you lose. So it's either you win or you lose, right? And I'm a, I'm, a, I'm a Democrat and I'm a good sportsman. If I lose, I lose. You go home, right? And you go back and... Uh, you wouldn't you... want to seek another platform? Uh, is it possible? Political halotry is not really one of my uh, good points. You know what I mean? You believe in something. You, I came to this party because I believe in what the party stands for. If some of the operators of the party uh, uh, behave in an underhanded manner, that does not mean the party has changed. So what you do is to ensure that you enthrone uh, uh, leadership that, that, that works in tandem with the objectives of the party. The solution is not to jump ship. Mm. So you're not going to hear me jumping ship or hear of me jumping ship to another party, no. So, so you really have your sights on wanting to make a difference in a dual state. You, you think that the state of things are really horrible in the state, isn't it? Is that what you I, think? I, uh, I have said before that I totally disagree with the style of governance uh, of the PDP-led government in a dual state. And uh, I just think that the people are not at the center of uh, policy. I just think that uh, we have high-sounding, high-faluting policies that really don't affect the man on the ground. So yes. I want to come in on the platform of Labour Party, people-centric party, to are say, you saying this because, put the people first. Are you saying this because you're a politician now, and that's why you're criticizing the policies of Godwin Obaseki, those who believe that you're a very close friend of his? It, so is it about being a politician now? They're not they tell deaf and dumb, say, market don't close. You know that expression. Mm. It is plain and obvious to all to see that there is an absence of people-focused people, sent, people governance in Edo State. I did not school you on that. Yeah, because... You are familiar. Yeah, I mean, in your party, in fact, there are those who are having their doubts who say, oh, Akpata, Olumide Akpata is a surrogate of Obaseki. Oh, I've heard that. It's an extension of Obaseki. Yeah. And uh, is a second option if Asue project fails. Mm. What, have is, you, have what, you not what, heard that? what is that sort of project? Please let me understand. I mean, the, being the PDP uh, aspirant that is being backed by the governor, and that those who believe that with your closeness with my Mr. Godwin Obaseki, and those who are having that fear in your party believe that the hand of Godwin Obaseki or the voice of Godwin Obaseki and the hand of Olumide Akpata, what they are one and the same. That's those who believe so. You know, you know, I can scream until I'm blue in the face. People will believe what they want to believe, but I say this to you, Sean. Sure. Um, there is civility in politics. That's the kind of politics I understand. Do I know Godwin Obaseki? Yes. Have we been friends? Yes. Good friends. But do I disagree with Godwin Obaseki? I totally disagree with his style of governance. I have said this before. So uh, that is the reason why I'm not in PDP. That is the reason why I'm not with him. I am in Labour Party because I think things can be done differently. I said this in another interview. Head the big pass some kind cap. It is impossible for me, Olumide Akpata, to be an agent or a surrogate or a mole of God in Obaseki. You, so you are totally, your own... totally my own man, Shion. It is impossible, and God in Obaseki knows it. But this, um, this uh, conspiracy theory is, is actually put out there by people in Godwin Obaseki's camp and some people in my party because they recognize 
that once you label anybody with that with that uh, uh, label, well, label anybody toga. with that toga, or you put that toga on, on any care, any aspirant that you are from Godwin or Baseki, dead on arrival. That's again that speaks to the point I made to you just now that there is dissatisfaction in the land regarding how well or how well uh, how Godwin or Baseki and the PDP have run Edo State. So those who don't want to see me progress quickly want to you know pin that label on me. Oh, he is Godwin or Baseki's cousin. They are close friends because they don't want me to move forward because they know that that will hang over me like a sword of Damocles. That, oh, you are from Godwin or Baseki. Even in his own party, the Aswe project that you just mentioned, is, uh, he has hiccups, suffering from serious hiccups because everybody feels that that is a Godwin or Baseki mm -hmm. project. I mean, uh, are you worried also of the... Uh, of the perception uh, in terms of zoning, mm. uh, where you come from, uh, going into this election, uh, those who will say fairness has to be brought into the game. You, you know, you, you, are the, you appear to be a master of this game. So if we're talking about the game, um, there are times for hard, cold, hard calculations in politics, right? So I believe in affirmative action, where there are imbalances, you, you put in uh, mechanisms in place to bring about balance. But there's also the fact that it is a game that you play to win, right? As you have said here before. Labor Party is new to the game, and Labor Party has to win. But you don't have to play with the zoning arrangement. There is no zoning arrangement in Labour Party in the first place. But in the in the entire context of the there is politics, no zoning arrangement. You in don't the think if you context, emerge yes. as a candidate, it will be, seem uh, imbalanced and unfair to some people to say coming again from this sanitary district. And if the is it fair? If the people disagree with that selection, they will vote accordingly. Um, zoning or affirmative action is brought about by consensus building, engagement. You don't just wish it into existence. It's not by legislative fiat. What you do is that you bring the people together, or you have the dominant tribes, who are, who are the majority, the mm -hmm. Bidis. You have there also the resource base. Only one local government has the largest gas deposit in Nigeria. You bring them to the table and say, hey, listen, let there be inclusivity. And it is a party that is well-meaning, that does not pay lip service to the issue of zoning, that does that. You do it properly. Mr. And that is what Labour Party is yeah. going to do, Shemu. Mr. Akwata, so you are an obedient? I'm an, sorry, are you an obedient? As in, do I subscribe, subscribe to, to the obedient movement? Oh, yes, yes, why not? I agree. It, 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 uh, it definitely... With, with definitely, your performance in Edo State in the last election, you think there is a chance for your party? This is the hotbed of the obedient movement. All right. In 30 seconds... If you look to the camera and tell Nigerians and do people what Ulumide Akwata will represent and will provide uh, as a candidate, what would that be? Just in 30 seconds, if you may pitch yourself. Ulumide Osaibovo Akwata will represent property, will represent um, prudence in government, will, re will represent a people-focused government uh, in Edo State. The people will come first if I am elected. So we need the delegates of the Labour Party to ensure that I am put forward as the candidate of the party because I will bring about a totally different style. The people will be first, the policies will be people-oriented, mm. and we will have transparency. We will run a dossier like an open book. Right. So that is what, exa what, what that's the difference that I will bring to the table. All right. A former president of the NBA and the Labour, a Labour Party governorship aspirant, Olumide Ozaibovo Akpata. I that. found it very, very interesting to call you by that name. <laughs> Thank you so much, Julie, for coming tonight. I appreciate it. Thank you so much.